I need to start Ahoy Bratislava, Ahoy Slovakian EU Presidency. We need to learn the local languages, at least one word. Uh, let me anyhow first uh, to extend my sincere gratitude to President Fresso and Mayor Nesrovnal uh, for organizing and hosting uh, this summit in partnership with us, the European Committee of the Regions here in Bratislava. Uh, let us uh, reflect as well uh, on the city where we are today. I'll take one example that might not be well known by the visitors, but for the local people, definitely. The, uh, Bratislava is, is definitely unique. It's probably the only place in the world where you could have almost walked over Chuck Norris. Some of you might remember him from TV. And I'm here, of course, referring to the bridge that connects Bratislava with Austria. The bridge was nearly named after this uh, TV hero in uh, 2012. But uh, there is a link between Chuck Norris' belief in the boundless strength of human beings and the final name of this bridge, Bridge of Freedom. This is an important reminder that we must always honor the courage of people who took their actions against the terror of communist Eastern Europe. Bratislava is also one of the capital cities of the Danube, bearing its ancient uh, Proto-Indo-European name, the Danube is the longest river in the EU. It unites hundreds of millions of people living in the numerous cities and regions uh, from more than 10 countries. It is a source of inspiration and creativity in science, music, arts, ideas and startups nowadays. The Danube con connects our past, present and also the future. Europe must follow, follow the Danube's examples of unity, solidarity and creativity. Bratislava stands for what it means to be a European. It's a symbol of bringing together people, places, resources and ideas. This is precisely the main theme of this summit, connecting the people of Europe. I would like to wish Slovakia all the best for their first EU presidency. Looking back at all the achievements you have reached despite Slovakia's challenging history, I'm sure you will lead Europe with the same patience and determination. Europe's uh, challenges are our own challenges. Let's build solutions together. We in Europe, we are living in difficult times, just as the worst of the economic crisis was behind us, instability uh, has displaced millions who have had little choice but to flee and make the uh, treacherous path to Europe. The answer lies in investing in cooperation across regions. We also now face uh, the prospects of a member state, part of our European family, leaving the Union. Today, 70% of citizens feel that EU is not nearly doing enough to tackle unemployment, and two-thirds feel we must do more to deal with the migration crisis. The EU is often blamed for all these troubles, but who and what is Europe? Europe does not mean only Brussels and, and Strasbourg. We too often forget that Europe is about all of us. It's a place of peace, solidarity, shared values, democracy and diversity. We must never take these values as granted. We have a responsibility to uphold these basic foundations that bind Europe together. We must also never Forget that in less than 60 years, European countries have achieved the unachievable. We have moved from dictatorship to democracy now in all parts of Europe. But despite the uh, barrage of criticism, three quarters of citizens still feel what brings Europeans together is more important than what separates. We therefore need to take position of the opportunity to move forward, to think forward, to demonstrate strength. 
Our EU is not perfect. It is often perceived as being too distant from the people it represents. As regional and local elected leaders, we are the closest to citizens and are listening with open ears to their fears and concerns. But when I look around here, I'm proud to counteract with the Eurosceptic perspective. Here we have in this uh, summit altogether a thousand people from across the EU ready to work together to move forward. Momentum is growing to build a better Europe based on mutual and shared responsibility across different levels of government. But we need to witness uh, the feeling that sovereignty is being overridden. We need to have a governance structure that places the power back in the hands of people. We need to start with our mayors, our presidents and our councillors and then look up, not down. They must be given a bigger say on the decisions that affect their communities. Let's remind us of the words of one of the EU's founding fathers, Schumann, uh, already 1950 in the declaration said, Europe will not be made of all at once or according to a single general plan. It will be built through concrete achievements. Delivering results will enhance the sense of belonging and reconnect the EU with its citizens. Only through concrete results, concrete impact, can we restore trust in our political leadership by showing that Europe is capable of reforming and progressing, by demonstrating, demonstrating that its institutions listen and showing Europe does not make a difference in citizens, uh, uh, that Europe does make a big difference in citizens' daily lives. We need positive and constructive change. We want a vision for Europe based on values, trust and hope, but we need not rebuild Europe from scratch. Instead, we need to build on the strong foundations that already exist. But we need to give regions and cities a larger role in deciding the future of Europe. And the title of this summit, Invest and Connect, sums up the only way to resolve these shared challenges. This is what underpins our uh, Pratislava Declaration this uh, declaration approved today by the CR. And it is this summit's contribution to setting out the vision of investment that encompasses our European values. We need to use all the financial opportunities available to us, private and public, to reconnect Europe. It's about investing and delivering results in our territories, in our communities. I would therefore ask that you all to be upstanding to acclaim this declaration. Dear friends, our summit slogan, Invest and Connect, means that we must focus and optimize investment funds to better connect Europe's people, places and resources. Let me briefly elaborate. First, connecting resources, EU cohesion helps cohesive uh, communities. Investing to end uh, regional disparity is the cornerstone of this summit and this declaration. Ponder quickly on these numbers. Unemployment in EU regions uh, last year ranged from 2.5% to 34%. Disparities between regions within a single member state are also striking. For in instance, GDP per capita is almost 3.6 times higher in the Bratislava region than in the Eastern Slovak regions. Though uh, the EU co cohesion policy certainly mitigated against the more negative impact of the crisis in the years since 2008, regional disparities continue to rise. Regional and local authorities have the knowledge, capacity and political will to respond, but they need a steady flow of capital. They need a stable e budget since they are responsible for managing a large part of it via uh, structural and investment funds and other funding sources that support innovation and competitiveness. But we need a more e effective and simple cohesion policy, a policy that is results-oriented and is, as, uh, is, is 
uh, simple. Let me raise one question. What's the use of so many audits based on figures when the EU can focus on auditing the end results, the impact? We should instead be assessing the real impact of the project's own on, on citizens' life uh, uh, rather than losing our time and energy on so many heavy uh, auditing procedures. Economic growth is being held back by the lack of investment and the significant gaps in competitiveness between regions. Tackling the investment gap is possible by better ensuring public and private budgets as complementarity. Investment levels in Europe have dropped by 15% over the last decade. This hindering competitiveness and uh, uh, getting uh, growth back on track to create uh, jobs for our young people. Nevertheless, investing to stimulate competitiveness is being done locally. The new entrepreneurial spirit is increasingly being seen in regions which are becoming the pioneers of a better Europe. This is why we welcome the European Commission's investment plan for Europe, which is supposed to attract 315 billion euro of funds from private financial capital to deliver jobs and growth. And we'll hear later on the message of Commissioner Katainen on this matter. Uh, the second point on our, uh, uh, on, on our summit, the connecting places. It's a mindset change which is needed to move from traditional infrastructure investment to flourishing ecosystems. We need to move away from the traditional thinking of public investment. This is about only building, about being about uh, building houses, transport, and other infrastructure. Vitally important, though they are. Ensuring that investment reaches the real economy, that is crucial. Channeling financing to SMEs, the backbone of regional economies and clusters, it's an essential part of investments. We need to redirect more investment towards education, training and skills, to research and innovation, to smart energy networks, to support startups and to scale up innovative and dynamic enterprises. That's what our special site event already for two days analyzed as an innovation camp in Bratislava. The third point in our summit, connecting people in a safe and flourishing European uh, Union. Our ambition must be a smarter, greener, more inclusive and more territorially balanced economy and society. For those of you who know me, uh, you will know that I have a love for the natural world and in particular ecosystems. As a young man, I spent my days north of the Arctic Circle in forests and lakes in Finland, doing as well part of my uh, greener world by planting not less than 100,000 trees. That was my target and I was able uh, to reach that target. in uh, very much the same way. We are all part of a given environment which is a continuous interaction and movement. Ecosystems we all live in are like biological organisms that work, interact, influence and work together. This is how I see regional economies. To make them flourish, we need every different actor from public authorities, SMEs and universities to co-create and orchestrate the delivery of their future. Business cannot be successful if we work in silos or in our boxes. Inventing the better future is not the responsibility of Brussels or Bratislava or ESPO alone. It concerns each of us. It is our shared responsibility and shared commitment. And I'm I'm proud as well to announce that tomorrow at half past 10 we will launch our first COR guide on regional ecosystems, mainly based on contributions by our members. Our members' commitment for this guide is motivating. Let us all build a bottom-up approach based on culture and open mindset of collaboration, proximity and creativity. On this note, let me conclude. 
by saying that I believe that the EU is the most effective way to address our common, common 21st century challenges of sustainable growth, employment and social cohesion. But to do so effectively, I invite uh, you to look at our Pratislava Declaration with states. Nothing can be achieved without continuous dialogue and partnership. Learning and working together is a key. And another citation from the declaration, reconnecting citizens, businesses and investments. This will continue to be at the heart of our long-term strategy. Building the future of Europe is up to every one of us. Building Europe's future means building our own future. We might not always agree, but we must recognize that the diversity of views uh, are a strength rather than a weakness. It's uh, uh, the one of values our union is built on. To follow Samuel Beckett's words, if you don't succeed at first, fail, fail again, fail better. Or using the words of students from the Alto University, failing, learning and success are all combined as the cornerstones for a mindset that can change the world. The genius of EU is that it carries on trying, and from every setback, it has emerged stronger. Once again, I would like to thank our host, the city and the region of Bratislava. I would like to thank all our members and speakers, and finally, I would also like to thank the staff of our committee and our partners for their immense work they have done to make this summit possible. So, let us invest and connect for our citizens and for our future. Thank you.